Rebecca was dancing when we came back with that horrible <laughs> uh, house music. That was house nice. music, right? As well, far as I exciting. know. Uh, there you go. Uh, Rebecca is the founder of Flyaway Geese. Rebecca at flyawaybordercollies.com. Uh, okay, we got to start at the beginning. How in the heck did you end up figuring out that you could use border collies to get rid of geese on the golf course and then turn it into a business? Well, you know, back in the 80s, uh, there was a golf course superintendent up in New Jersey who uh, trained the first border collie to do goose control. Um, and, you know, it was just basically looking at the way a border collie moves. I mean, if you think about it, if you've ever seen a border collie work sheep, they put their heads down and their tails in between their legs and they stalk things. That's the exact movement that a wolf or coyote uses when they're hunting. So geese don't see like you and I do. They see color shapes and patterns that trigger brain responses from them. So if they see something that moves with its head down and its tail in between its legs, they see predator. But the border collie has no interest in hurting the birds. Um, so there's no damage to the birds. It's very uh, humane. And the birds don't want to be there anymore because they think there's a predator on site. So it was a natural deduction from the movement of a border collie. The border collie is the only breed of dog that moves like that. That's fascinating. Did you know that, Brian? No, my dog does not move like that. <laughs> no, my, my dog flops to the ground. Uh, okay, so this guy in New Jersey figures this out. Right. That's a long way from starting a business in uh, rural North Carolina. I don't know where uh, Stanfield, North Carolina is, and I thought I've been to every town there. It's just outside of Charlotte, so okay. um, we're about 30 miles outside of Charlotte. And, you know, I got into Border Collies. I was pregnant with my now 21-year-old, so I've been in it almost 22 years now. And I was driving down the road, and there was a sign that said Border Collie Puppies for Sale. And I was like, God, you know, I'd really like to have one of those. And my ex-husband said, just don't bring home a red one. And so all they had was red ones, so I brought home a red one. <laughs> and um, he said, well, I'm going to tell you something. We're not going to become sheep farmers. He said, I'm not going to go and tell my friends that I'm a sheep farmer. And uh, guess what? We became sheep farmers too. Uh-huh. Um, I'm divorced now. Um, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> remarried um, to a guy who's okay with me and a sheep farmer. You know, I mean, isn't sometimes you just got to make sacrifices. Isn't that technically a shepherd? Yes. Uh, I mean, okay. It is a shepherd. It, so, yes. Does so it sound better as a shepherd than no, a sheep I'm, farmer? No, I'm just... It did when Samuel L. Jackson said it. That's exactly right. <laughs> so, you know, I started out uh, training border collies to work sheep. And um, to be honest with you, what I discovered was that people didn't want to pay a whole lot for a sheep dog. Um, and there aren't a whole lot of sheep in the United States. Um, but let me tell you what there are a whole lot of in the United States. <laughs> Geese. <laughs> You're right. So, in addition, uh, take us through the training process. You train sure. these dogs, and then you sell them to golf courses? I do. I, I do. I, I, before, I, I believe we've hit caller 14, haven't we? We can tell people we to have, stop calling. We definitely have a winner, yes. Yes, okay. <laughs> Sorry, Rebecca. <laughs> it's okay. I'm just trying to save the boys behind the screen. A uh, little bit of work. <laughs> caller number 114. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we're, we're, we've on gotten now. there. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we're way past it. <laughs> At what age do you start training one of these puppies? You know, it's funny. Um, we've got puppies here uh, at the golf industry show this week. And um, I start my puppies on a mop. And I know that sounds crazy, but um, I start my puppies chasing a mop at four weeks old. So um, if you think about a mop, like an old school seven ninety nine mop, um, it looks like a bird if you flop it around so um, we start them chasing mops at four weeks old and then we move to ducks uh, that can't fly when they're about eight to ten weeks old and um, by the time they're six or eight months old they're out chasing geese and um, I tell people the easy part of my job is teaching border collies to chase birds the hard part of my job is teaching border collies to stop chasing birds when I tell them to that makes perfect sense. Yeah. Um, the, the chasing bird part's easy. It's the, hey, um, come back, don't chase them back to Canada part that I have a hard time with. Do you, uh, <laughs> do you whistle at them? Do you, I mean, because you're, I've, I've seen this done. They're hundreds of yards away. How do, right. how do you communicate with we the We do use whistle commands. I mean, I'll be honest. They hear a lot better than, um, they're like men. You know, they hear better than they act like they hear sometimes. Don't know what you're you talking know? about. Um, so, we so, don't you make know. those kind of jokes on this show, do we, Brian? <laughs> what was that? 
<laughs> Sorry, Rebecca. <laughs> anyway, back to the dogs. They do hear me. Um, you know, I've got dogs that work on airfields across the country, um, on airports and things like that with airplanes moving. And people ask me that all the time, you know, how do the dogs hear you? We do use whistle commands in those situations. Most of the time on a golf course, on a corporate facility, things of that nature, the dogs can hear me. Um, now I will use a whistle to recall sometimes, but uh, most of it's verbal commands. How many dogs do you have? And Too many, my husband would say, but um, how many never does a, enough how many, in my opinion. Okay. <laughs> how many does a golf course need if, if my course had these geese? You only need one. 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 I mean, you know, I have a lot of people ask me that question if they've got a big golf course or a lot of space. And generally speaking, I mean, I, you know, it, people think, oh, well, you know, she's going to try to sell me two or three dogs. The problem is the dogs are so effective. It's not a problem. The dogs are so effective at doing goose control that if you buy more than one dog on a property, you've got two dogs to entertain when you don't have geese anymore. And that to me is a worse situation than, you know, taking a little bit longer for one dog to handle a problem in a big space. I mean, gen I rarely have I found a golf course that really needed more than one dog. Um, I, I hate to ask this question in front of a representative of the GCSA, but I don't think I have any choice. Uh, which is more trainable, a superintendent or a dog? <laughs> 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 Can I plead the fifth on that okay. one? <laughs> okay. Everybody knows the answer, Rebecca. Let me tell you how much I love the golf industry show and the GCSAA, okay? okay? Because they have been great to me and have been great to work with here. We are so thrilled to be here. And um, so I'm going to plead the fifth on that one and uh, just tell you how great this show's been for us. Good. Uh, I'm glad to hear it. We've um, given away, uh, we're giving away two dogs here at the show uh, in conjunction with Lebanon Turf and uh, GCM Online. And we gave away one dog today. Um, a gentleman from Louisville won the dog today. And um, it was amazing. There were almost 600 entries to win the dog today. Wow. I mean, and to think about that, I mean, we're here at this trade show and we're in a small booth back there. And to get 600 people through that booth and 600 people by, I mean, you know, that's a lot of traffic for, for a, any show you go to. Um, so, I mean, here we are, just a little dog vendor from North Carolina, you know. I'm, I'm, I'm very curious about the geese that you had running around in there. Ducks. Uh, those were ducks. Oh, those were ducks? Yeah. Okay, I just saw. Uh, I can't uh, own video. geese. Now, here's here's a funny story if you want to know a funny story. Um, if I were training drug dogs, I could have crack cocaine at my house, but I can't have a goose if I'm training goose dogs. That's illegal. Does the crack help train the goose dogs? <laughs> <laughs> Trying to solve know, problems here, Rebecca. I haven't tried it. I haven't tried it. But you know I'm game. <laughs> you know, the, the, the problem is, uh, you know, there's nothing less attractive than a dog smoking anything, right? <laughs> I don't know. There was that poker picture that went That's around. That's right. I mean, that was a great picture. <laughs> Brian, I think you can go. Rebecca and I will just do the last half hour of the show. Yep. <laughs> I think we found... Rebecca may actually be, she's not a Gibson, she's a Paulson, I think. She could be. <laughs> we found another mystery Paulson. <laughs> she could be. Uh, I mean, I told you there was an Inside the Ropes banner in there. Um, so, so you could be right. Well, thank you so much for sharing your story. You're welcome. Where can people find information about the Flyaway Geese? They can go to www.flyawaygeese.com um, and... Uh, find out anything they want to know about our dogs um, you know if they're here this weekend they can come over and watch the demos we do we drove all the way from North Carolina I've got three adult dogs three puppies and four ducks um, and a partridge in a pear tree so well, uh, and y'all rode in the same car mm -hmm. oh my goodness mm -hmm. my husband really does love me I told you I picked the right one you picked a shepherd yes I did. I mean, there I you did. go <laughs> Rebecca thank you very much thank you